Hi guys, so today we'll be seeing how do we run this particular application, which is a project on Django. So first of all, right click on this zip file, click on extract here. It's going to create a folder for you. Just open this folder. Now it has got uh, five files over here. Basically, these four files are your for your uh, project. Over here, steps to execute will contain all the steps through which you can execute or, or basically run this application onto your local system. And over here, you'll see the steps for deployment as well. Okay, the steps for deployment is going to take care for for your deployment on cloud. So, guys, uh, I've also added the video for it. You can just check out this video. It is going to showcase all these steps properly. How exactly this is happening, and practically you will be getting that idea. First of all, foremost, we want to run this application on our local system. So, how do we do that? So, first of all, you go over here. This contains your project files. So don't go inside this as of now. First of all, just be outside of it. Come over here, write CMD. I'm assuming you have Python installed on your system. If you not got Python installed on your system, just go over here, install Python. Go to down, download Python. Choose the operating system. Right now I'm choosing Windows. Come down. You can choose a version of Python. I'm choosing like Python 3.7.6. Choose a 64-bit installer and just install it. Install Python on Windows. So you have to ensure one thing when you're installing it. Just click on this checkbox. Add Python to Python. This is very important, guys, because then only we'll be able to run the commands. So over here, I'm just going to run the first command: pip install virtual env. Since I've already got it installed, so this, I'm going to get a requirement already satisfied. So now I'm going to create a virtual environment. So pip install virtual env. I'm going to name it as college env. Enter. This is going to create a virtual environment for me. Let that get created. All right. So while this is happening, I'll also show you the project files. So this is your basically the entire project. So I'll just remove this at folder to project. These are all your entire project files. Okay. So you'll see these all these files are needed for Heroku deployment. So we don't need to see them right now. But what we want to see is all these model files. This is nothing but your database. So all these data tables has been made. And all these are basically your columns. This views basically contain your backend. So you have to understand that when someone goes onto a URL, a link, this is the code which is being executed for each link, like the index. So index is over here, views.index. Let's say if I'm going to attendance. So attendance will go over here somewhere. Okay, login is required for this, so this is going to check for attendance. This is the one attendance, attendance, attendance. Okay, so all these uh, links has been mentioned over here. So basically, we are just including the URLs from here and we are just calling them. Okay, meanwhile, our uh, virtual environment has been created, so we'll just go inside this folder called college env cd scripts and activate then since we went in two directories we will just go out two directories now we are going to go inside our project folder and one thing i'm going to run now is pip install hyphen r requirements.txt so what this is going to do is it's going to install all the packages which is mentioned over here which is required for us to run this application so it's just going to go ahead and install each basically first of all it is it requires an internet connection it is basically uh, capturing all the projects uh, all the sorry all the packages and now it is on all the frameworks as well since django is a framework after that it is going to install them onto your system in a virtual environment so i'll just put a virtual environment because uh, in my external environment i have different versions of django installed so that's why i create multiple virtual environments so you are free to not use this virtual environment directly run this command pip install hyphen r requirements of txt so we'll just wait a moment while this thing is installed meanwhile we'll again get back to the code this templates folder is going to contain all your html files you can just check out the code over here and see how things are being defined 
Okay. Okay. So packages has been installed. Now the first command we want to run is python manage.py make migrations. No change is detected. Then I'm going to run migrate. So now this this command is basically going to create a all the tables needed for this particular project. So once we have run this application, so we are going to run again Python manager py create super user. Press enter. Now I'm just keeping the uh, username simple as admin. Email address I'm leaving it as blank. Password again as admin. Password you can't see, but whatever you're typing, ensure that you're typing the same thing in both the password fields. Uh, it is there's a validation by Django. So right now I'm just going to bypass that validation by pressing Y and enter. So my super user has been created. Now I'm going to run the applications python manage.py run server. So if you are facing any difficulty on running this particular command, so you can just add something at the end of it. I'll just tell you why. So by default, this is your website 127.0.0.1.8000. So I'm just going to copy it. Control C is going to break this. You can add 5000 over here. So it's going to basically go on to the port number 5000 okay so control c is again going to break it if you do not mention any port number it's going to by, go by default to 8000 so once you've got this i'm just going to go to my browser and i'm going to paste that over here is going to ask me for a login i'm not going to log in right now i'm just going to first create an admin account and admin admin which we have created a super user so now this is our back end of the application now within this application backend, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a user first. So let's add some users. So this is a user by the name of says Sandeep. The password I'm uh, let's say this Sandeep is a teacher. So teacher123 is the password. Save. Okay, so this teacher has been added. Let's have let's have a name to this teacher. So let's have like let it be like this, not an issue okay so i have added one user over here now i'll just go to assigns i'm going to go ahead and click on add assign go to class id so instead of adding each and everything individually i'm just going to go ahead and start it from here so class id add class add course as you can see i'm clicking on each of those buttons and it's going to take me to a new table value so add a department so finally i'm going to add a department let's say the department is coding uh, so let's say the department is uh, computer science. So com CS is the ID for it. Computer science is the name of the department. Save. And now let's add a course. So course is by the name of let's say I'm giving it an ID as CS 101 122, and I'm the name is that C programming. C plus plus programming. The short name for this is CPP save now this course has been added for this class i'm going to add another one let's add this like cs 101 and i'm going to name this python py is the short name save okay this class will have an id now uh, let's say the id is coding department now i'm going to add a department so let's have a department let's name this department as programming so prog is the short name programming save we've got this department now section let's say the section is one semester is also one save so i've got a class id now i'm going to go to the course let's pick a course i'm picking up c plus plus programming so before that i also show you how do we modify a value so we can just go over here and then just remove this save so you come over here c plus plus programming teacher i'm going to add a teacher so over here we have got sandeep so we can basically choose sandeep now because we have created a user by the snap let's have the name uh, id for this person so sandeep san underscore you know this is the noun over here we've got two departments so we are choosing it's programming the name for this teacher is sandeep anuragi male date of birth is 1980 once we have had this, we're going to assign a time slot. So 9.30 to 10.30, Monday, safe. 
all these time slots are mentioned over here you can add more time slots you can remove it you can modify it accordingly okay so we got this first programming course by Sandeep Anuragi let's have another course same coding python now again by Sandeep Anuragi at a different time so let's say 3.30 on a Thursday save let's create one more teacher so same python I'm just going to create a user I'm going to name this user as uh, let's say uh, Krishna password is as teacher123 teacher123 save okay so once we have got this saved once we have got this saved so I'm again going to give us a name so let's say the name is Krish and uh, programming Krishna Gupta mail let's say 90 save so I'm going to add another assign time let's say 11.50 and I'm going to have this as setup as this so I've got basically records coming up over here after this uh, I want to add few students I'm just going to add a student to create another user for it let's say the student name is Ashwin password is student123 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 save so I've got this username created this USN is nothing but your universal student number so let's say the student number is this CS2020343 and uh, you've got a name so let's have a name as Ashwini Anand the birth date has been mentioned save so we've got a, a student as well now I'm going to add another student just in case uh, so I'm going to name the student as uh, let's say Thiraj password is again student123 student123 save the ID is again 343344 Thiraj Singh and let's have like let it be okay save so I've got two students for programming you can basically change it over here you can add more classes as well okay now once you've got this done so now what I want to do is I want to sign in now so now I'm just going to open up incognito window and I'm going to open the URL for my site and I'm going to first of all log in as Sandeep Sandeep teacher123 sign in so Sandeep gets these buttons over here attendance it can enter attendance it can enter mask, marks it views timetable so this is a timetable for Sandeep right now so on Mondays 9.30 to 10.30 is C programming on Thursday you've got coding Python okay when I click on this you will also see the list of free teachers for this particular time frame so the moment you build this application with a lot of data the more comprehensive it will be start becoming marks let's enter marks for a student so enter marks so let's say we are entering marks for Ashwini Anand we give him Ashwini Anand 15 we give him the rest 80 let's enter semester end marks so let's say 80 and 75 so I've got so like few marks set up over here attendance let's say I'm entering attendance for this particular date as present 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 absent let's have like absent absent let's have like present absent okay I can also go ahead and create an extra class let's say today is an extra uh, yesterday was an extra class where Shunu was present the others was absent once you have got this all thing done you can go to reports you can generate report and over here you can see since we have got marks done for a particular course and over here you can see you've got marks done for another course over here so the moment we start adding marks to it it's you're going to view all these students detail as well okay this is what we are going to see as a teacher view similarly you can log in again and now i'm going to log in as a student so ashwini student one two three sign in the moment i sign in i can view my attendance so this is my attendance right now for c plus plus programming i have got three classes and out of which out of five classes i have basically attended three classes my attendance percentage is 60 percent attendance by subject so basically i can see this as well when i was present when i was absent so all this data is very much properly maintained you can also go to the marks and you can see all the marks i've got as a student 
time table again all the courses I have right now so basically you can choose your class right now I just chose some dummy values so you can have class names are properly set up over here okay you can have classes courses departments properly set up and the entire structure becomes very nicely set up. that's how we run this particular application okay so I'll just show you once again Sandeep teacher one two three sign in you can have all these fields over here okay so that's how you're going to run this and check it out try adding values to it you'll be able to understand the whole database structure i'll also suggest adding and modifying more slots and uh, more days of the week as well and you can uh, so test name the thing is that i've added six test names over here so you have to ensure that it is six in number because this particular logic over here get CI which is basically getting your marks is taking in consideration of six subjects the moment you change it accordingly change it over here as well these numbers these both numbers so if you're having let's say five subjects so change it to four and change this as well as to four okay so how many how many how much ever number of subjects you have just subtract minus one from it and then replace this accordingly all right so i hope this thing is clear thank you so much bye bye